Hey, I just want to make sure that you pause to read the disclaimer that I'm putting up right now. And you can look in the description for links to any of the things or articles that I will be discussing in this video. What's this gonna be to? We're coming after you. We're gonna solve that mystery. I'll see you Scooby. The reason why my video was so important to a lot of people is because I pointed out a lot of things before Nick ever made a response. I recorded my video and Stephanie uploaded hers. And then the follow up was more so just evidence of everything that I already stated on my own in the first video, while adding in other people's perspectives as well to make my points more powerful. So my video was completely original and so was Nick's because he was directly affected by the situation. Which means that there's going to be moments where Tom stole from both of us because he saw both of our videos before he made his own and didn't give credit to those ideas. And I know that this begs the question, what if these are just conclusions that people will naturally draw when viewing the information? Well, not only will I be showing you examples of him taking what I said literally word for word, but you're not asking yourself the right question regardless. The question is does he have something to add to this conversation and does he give credit to people who have already pointed out the things that he himself watched before he ever even made his video remember in his message to me he said I'm thinking about making a video on Stephanie he didn't even start yet before he viewed everything so he has no excuse not to give any of us credit because even though I showed other people's opinions I thought of a lot of what they said myself I even found some of the same information as some people on my own so a few quick things I just want to say thank you to the people who were linking me these videos on my last video I really appreciate it because as this woman said it's really hard to actually uncover the truth about people in a short timely fashion it takes a while but I still showed the other perspectives because the funny thing is showing a lot of perspectives that supports your own perspective adds weight to your perspective and when you make it clear that the people who you are showing it's not your voice it's someone else it once again makes your points more powerful because more people are agreeing with it that's why if you really care about something you should probably show the names of the people who you're taking from if you really want to add more weight to what you have to say Tom it also gives a voice to people who don't have one it's explicitly an endearing effort and the only reason why people hide other supporting perspectives that they've seen is not because they're naive or they're stupid or they just didn't think of it that way it's because of their own selfish greed I'm seriously supposed to believe that every single action that he made that just so happened to be the most selfish thing he could do was all a fucking mistake? No. They want people to believe that they're some sort of unique intellectual. So even though showcasing multiple perspectives gives their video the opportunity to make a very strong critique, as he claimed he wanted to do, they sacrifice it in an effort to inflate their own egos. Sacrifice an opportunity at a strong opinion so that they can be seen as the only opinion. Which which proves that they never cared about the issue in the first place. This is when people profit off of the misery of others. And I want to make another point that, you know, on my channel I talk about sociopathic behavior and autistic behavior all the time. Abusive people prey on empathetic people. Abusive people get a high off of getting away with doing bad things. And that's why someone like Turkey Tom can message me in the most innocent way possible, practically look me right in the eye, and then go on to stab me right in the back because they get a high off of getting away with doing bad things. And that's why no matter what he says, that's why even if he tries to fucking apologize, he is not sorry. He has a problem and an apology is not gonna fix it. This is fun for him. And people need to understand that if they ever wanna be able to recognize abusive tendencies because the red flags are clear. What Tom did wasn't endearing at all. It was selfish. His input isn't about spreading information or spreading awareness and showing a lot of people who are upset by this. This is about him living out a fantasy and getting a high off of getting away with doing bad things. That's it. So that everyone can believe that Turkey Tom is the one who set the record straight, as he put it. And it'll get him a lot of attention, as he put it. Everyone tells on themselves over time. You just gotta read between the lines. Now we're at 21 minutes and 30 seconds. 
Here's what he says. If you had no intention of profiting off of this, why did you link your merch in the bio of the video and spend your entire video wearing your own merch? Why would she make a video called Moving On where she makes merch from the situation? Wasn't this a super traumatic experience where she was bullied and felt pressured? He is asking these questions about her merch as if we didn't already point this out. In our video yesterday, oh, I'm ready to move on. Hee hee, I'm so happy. Giggly, I'm thinking like, what the heck is so funny? Why is that funny and to giggle about all of a sudden? Something that's so traumatizing before, 48 hours, 72 hours later, you were laughing at. She says, I have loved everything I've seen on Twitter. And I'm envisioning him though because this makes me happy and satisfied and feel like I got my revenge. That phrase was so difficult to see and hear and imagine other people saying. Well, now she's suddenly okay with it because it's making her money. So at 2153, so far, the only thing that I have found in his video that was his own opinion was this. If you ask me, the answer to all of these questions is that she never felt bad in the first place. And now she's reaping the profits off of her millions of loyal fans who are willing to spend money on her merch. That was really worth you making your own video, right? You could have just tweeted that because that was the only original thing that you added that wasn't misinformation while being your own thoughts. And it doesn't even add anything because so many people that you're taking from have said that already and proved it. You're just hypothesizing. So yeah, thanks for letting us know that you agree with us, but you didn't have to make a whole video about it. So at 2244, Turkey Tom starts to bring up the importance of addressing old topics. I don't think that it should be a surprise that Nick is having a hard time moving on. When a video with 10 million views was released, where Stephanie insinuates that he is a predator and explicitly says that he is a terrible person. And you know, all that sounds good, but the problem is that the very first clip of my video already addressed this. So again, he added nothing. And even worse, he's saying this to everyone as if this is some heartfelt revelation he has when he's just taking things word for word from my video. So at 2250, I'm listening to him and he's talking about some really important stuff how everyone keeps treating these incidents like it's some form of entertainment instead of taking it seriously, recognizing who is actually at fault here and how it's affecting the other person. This isn't just entertainment as many mukbang fans seem to treat it. Accusations like this can't just be moved on from. They will follow someone forever. And you know, I actually think that that's a really important thing to add into a video, but there's just one problem. You contradict it yourself. At the very beginning of your video, you purposefully stated that it's edutainment. In other words, entertainment. So why is it that you're telling everyone that it's bad for them to treat this as if it's entertainment? It's almost like this isn't actually your opinion and you're taking it from someone else just because it sounded good. And why does it sound like that? Because he took that from me too. This isn't just entertainment as many mukbang fans seem to treat it. I mean, people watch all this drama stuff for entertainment. They don't actually care about the people that they're criticizing, and it's really sad. Accusations like this can't just be moved on from. They will follow someone forever. And this is going to follow me for life. For life. For life. Like, this isn't stealing with permission. Unbelievably, you're managing to get away with a core belief of mine. Something that I genuinely care about. And then profiting off of it. Like, in all seriousness, I can't describe to you how insulting that is. Just because you take everything that I made and reword it and switch some of the stuff around doesn't mean that you're not stealing from me. It doesn't mean that everything that you thought of saying didn't come from me. Look at how many times I said this. These are my beliefs. This is how much I cared about it. I put it at the very beginning of my video for a reason. And I showcased other people's perspectives when it was appropriate to do so. In our video yesterday, oh, I'm ready to move on. Hee hee, I'm so happy. Giggly, I'm thinking like, what the heck is so funny? Why is that funny and to giggle about all of a sudden? Something that's so traumatizing before, 48 hours, 72 hours later, you were laughing at. She says, I have loved everything I've seen on Twitter. And I'm envisioning him though, because this makes me happy and satisfied and feel like I got my revenge. Jenny is really, really not taking this well. And guess who's watching every single story? who has been watching it for days and days here in the receipts. I also said it here. And then all she has to say about the lack of response she gave to Honey's situation is, I was trying really hard to move on. Maybe I should have addressed it more and more. Yeah, that's on me. But I was really just trying to, just trying not to freak out and go back to that space again after being bullied by you. But it isn't over yet. What do you mean you want to move on? Because it's not about you anymore? Okay, not forgiven then. And once again, I showed it. Most people don't watch this stuff for the truth. They want entertainment. They view people's real life drama as if it's some sort of reality TV show. If you want this to be shortened and you don't actually care about learning about the truth, you just want a story that you can eat some popcorn, drink some tea, and you know, sit down, relax, and watch it or something. When people are miserable and they're like affected by this, you, it's very hard 
heartless and disgusting. Like if you're actually watching these tea channels hoping to get a good perspective on what's happening, they don't take any time to research anything. They don't look into anything, they don't look for evidence, they just hop on the bandwagon because even if they're wrong they can just say oh well everybody else was too. I mean people watch all this drama stuff for entertainment. They don't actually care about the people that they're criticizing and it's really sad because it's something that I obviously care a lot about. It's important to me. You have to understand that the internet was almost unanimously on the other side of this issue. Our perspective was quite literally unique and rare. And if you mean to tell me, knowing this about everyone's opinion on this matter, that you honestly believe that Turkey Tom just so happened to wait until it was over, months after the incident, waited for me to give him permission to use my sources, watched my video before ever creating a script, said the same things that I said, touched on the same moral perspective that I had, used the same clips and hid my name throughout the entire video that despite all of that this was truly just his own idea and that i didn't influence him in any way that i didn't deserve any real credit like he gave everyone else then you're just being naive to say the least and if anything you're wrong he was mimicking our heartfelt rhetoric because he has no empathy of his own and he knows that people will respond positively to others when they truly believe that someone cares about something that's why he steals from people who cares about things for money and fame this isn't just entertainment as many mukbang fans seem to treat it accusations like this can't just be moved on from they will follow someone forever and he didn't credit any of these people but it gets worse at 2345, he said, In her follow-up, she says this, I never implied that Nick sexually harassed me. I never implied that Nick did anything illegal. I never implied that Nick committed crimes towards me or towards anybody else. So, yes, you did imply that he did something illegal. You cited California law in reference to your accusation that he was according you without permission. That is what implying means. I never implied that Nick did anything illegal. I never implied that Nick committed crimes towards me or towards anybody else. You put up information about wiretapping laws, which is implying that he possibly wiretapped you. I never implied that Nick me. And you said what he did to you was worse than being assaulted. That is the literal definition of implying that he sexually assaulted you or did something that was objectively worse. At 2355, he says, How can you expect anything to change when you yourself are not telling him what you want? Clearly, he did nothing wrong in this specific situation because he couldn't have even known what you wanted. Well, wouldn't you know? I said the same thing. You can't blame him for making you uncomfortable when you never said how you felt, either of you. No one can know unless you say something. And when I watched this stuff, even though I was skeptical at first, this is the point where I start to feel like, okay, something's a foul here. Like, I feel like I'm watching my own fucking video because skepticism can only go so far before it shifts directions. Now we're at 2430, and what's ironic is this line. Him being bad at communication, or being a little headstrong, isn't grounds to make a 50 minute video about him calling him a f***er. So, you can see the BS with her, but I'm supposed to believe that it's a mistake when it comes to you, right? That you just didn't know any better when you did the same thing, right? I just love how he brings attention to the time. Talking about how things aren't worth making an hour long video because he made a 40 minute video, adding absolutely nothing to the conversation. Stole from three small YouTubers who couldn't even get their names mentioned, and I know you're all wondering how he stole from those other two small youtubers well we're finally at that point and this is where i really start to get fed up What's this you need to? We're you. We're at 2544 he plays a clip about stephanie sue being a liar and a manipulator and it goes on for a while he wants to play that game then let's have a look at a few clips from her own channel i decided to put staples into every pair of shoes that he owned like inside the shoe so that when he stuck his foot in there would just be staples floating around this is not his video these are clips that i got from blinding end so with that being said why isn't their name at the end along with mine and i want to make it clear that i am in no way associated with these two youtubers they don't even know that i'm making this video we've never spoken before but the fact that he did this is still wrong so i'm gonna say something about it at 2754 this also isn't his video but he doesn't make it clear at all i had this intense theory this intense anger towards this teacher and I decided it was going to be my new life mission to ruin her life like that was just that's how horrible I was 
I'm just gonna ruin her life. I'm gonna make her life really, really difficult. Crazy, we're talking about revenge. Yet, yeah. I'm just a loser. <laughs> I was working and I decided to get revenge on a customer. Anyone can see this and think it's his edit. He uses music in his video. Let's have a chat, shall we? If I could save time in a bottle The first thing that I'd like to do So how are they supposed to know that these are two separate videos from Vrizelda and Blinding End? You didn't even put them in the description. But oh right, cause at the end, you told them to go to my video. For all the sources you stole. You know, all that research you did. Didn't say which clips or anything. So again, how are they supposed to know that for one, that's not your edit, and two, that's one of the many sources that you stole from me? I've never had anyone tell me that they think that the clips I show on my videos are my own except for Tom. My format makes it absolutely clear that those clips are not my own. I've made all sorts of efforts and I'm finding better ways to do it as time goes by. The point that I'm making is, editing is not my strong suit and even as a small channel, I somehow managed to do a better job of crediting people than he does. That makes no sense at all unless it's on purpose. The reason why it's so important that he should have put their names at the end along with mine is because he's making it seem like he only used one clip from me and that he got their clips himself. Isn't he claiming to only put my name at the end because he just took sources from me? So then why didn't you put their names at the end too? I mean the clips that he showed of the three of us are about the same amount of input. So why? Well I have an answer for that. What he is essentially telling everyone is that if you want to know who those people are, you need to go to his video, see their clips, somehow recognize that those aren't his clips and are in fact two different videos made by two different people, watch his video all the way to the very very end, see the disclaimer that's four seconds long, and then somehow magically know that those are two of the many sources that he stole from me. Then go to my video to get their links in my description. And the funniest part is, even if it's plausible for a few people to be capable of figuring all that out. Realistically, no one watches to the end for the most part, so most people won't even see this uninformative sentence in the first place. Like most big YouTubers, he firmly believes that if you're small, you deserve crumbs and you should be grateful for even that. So since he had to at least show my name for stealing everything that I said, and I deserve more credit than them since his whole video is based on mine, he decided to give me the bare minimum and give them nothing. Now this is really subtle, but pay attention. At 2912, even his little cheeky response is stolen. Let's see if you can tell how. Are you guys seeing a pattern here? <laughs> yes, I actually am seeing a pattern. I appreciate you pointing that out to me, Stephanie. Did you catch it? No? Well, listen closely to the background music. Are you guys seeing a pattern here? <laughs> Yes, I actually am seeing a pattern. I appreciate you pointing that out to me, Stephanie. That's a clip from Rizelda Driz's video that he's using as a visual. But the entire purpose of Rizelda's video was to show that Stephanie also has a pattern of behavior. At the start of Rizelda's video, this is what Tom saw when he decided to download it. was a pattern of behavior. This is the definition of pattern of behavior. A lot of us run off patterns. I don't know if I'm the only one, but if someone makes a mistake, you forgive them. But if they continue to do the same, same thing over and over and over again, and they hurt people every single time, I think that's very dangerous, and I think that's very alarming. Are you guys seeing a pattern here? <laughs> and then he stole it, as if it was his own remark. Tom could have pointed this out anywhere in his video, this little cheeky remark. And yet he chooses to say this over the very video that did nothing but point that one thing out, which would be the most insulting place to say it. So once again, he likes to get away with doing bad things. At 30.50 he says, We have to ask why she was able to get away with it so effectively. I think the answer comes in just looking at it too. Stephanie is a cute Asian girl who tries to come across as having a very ditzy, disaffected personality. Regardless of your point of view of the incident, literally everyone and their mom pointed that out for the most part, so he's adding nothing new here. At 3246, he says, If you ask me, what genuinely happened here is that Nick was trying to pressure Stephanie into making a video about Veronica where they would both trash talk her and share their own experience, as he was still angry about the Shook Bang situation. When she did not give in immediately, he became frustrated and began trying to leverage various things against her to get her to make the video with 
with him. Stephanie, fearful for her own reputation, also saw an opportunity to level Nick, so she made a video about him where she accused him of being manipulative and threw a bunch of unrelated accusations in there to make the blow all the more damaging. You aren't forgiven. You're just as bad as Nick, if not worse, and that's the position that we take. It quite frankly doesn't matter how badly he pressured you in that mukbang. You don't have the right to play victim while simultaneously misappropriating the Me Too movement and creating an angry mob against people who don't deserve one. It's like you keep saying, I'm scared he's gonna do this, I'm scared he's gonna do that, I'm scared he's going to use this against me. Nick, Stephanie, and Zach are at fault at many points in this entire issue. But Stephanie is the bigger hypocrite because she is the opposite of everything that she claims and promotes. But hey, he still has time to give his own original thoughts, so speaking of which, let's take a look at the one time he actually says something that's his own. Now here we are, his last chance. The only thing that he said that wasn't just him agreeing with us, or spreading misinformation. This is what made his video worth making. When prompted by his fans to respond to a number of inconsistencies with his story, Stephanie's conspirator by the name of Zach Choi said, For those of you waiting for a response to Nick's continuous harassment, I have retained an attorney and he will be handling those matters going forward. As far as we know, there has been no legal action against Nick, and the fact that both Steph and Zach said this is very suspicious. Getting a lawyer doesn't prevent them from responding publicly. The two already made the situation public by making videos about it, and now that there are people questioning them and bringing up some of the many inconsistencies in their stories, they want to keep it private, and they just can't respond. Right. That's it. That was his opinion. Right. Right. That was worth 40 minutes of nothing. Right. He made hundreds or thousands of dollars off of... Right. Got hundreds of thousands of views off of... Right. He got countless subscribers off of... Right. Some people in my Discord were looking at everything when I first brought up my concerns, and they screenshotted some of the comments that were upsetting them. People are congratulating him for an idea that isn't his. They're saying that they're surprised that his opinion is so different, as if he doesn't have this kind of deferring opinion often. And when I got traction from him, you want to know the comments that I saw? I saw multiple comments saying that they subscribed to me and not him. I've never seen someone credit someone else, let alone say, I subscribe to you and not them, lol. And I'm so mad because I uploaded so many videos since then, I don't remember where I saw those comments. I looked all over and I think it was even in one of my live chats. But all of the live chat comments don't get recorded, so I went to the general comment list to find them. And YouTube's system is so weird because you can't select newest to oldest, at least I didn't see that option. Even after scrolling for hours, I was still seeing comments that were posted a day ago, right after comments that were posted 7 months ago. How am I supposed to know when I've gotten through all of them if they do that? So, for the time being, those comments are lost forever now. I just wish that I had have known what I know now back then. Because I obviously would have just screenshotted it then and there. But even if you don't believe me, those comments do exist somewhere. And I think that it's because people just kind of thin sliced that his video was a repeat of mine. And even though I can't show you those comments, I saw something that was much worse when I was looking for those comments. So, now people are claiming that I'm taking from you, because you didn't make it clear that you took from me. Nobody said that I was taking from Christopher Tom. I didn't see a single comment that said that, because of the different ways that you handled my content. Like, you took so many ideas from me because the only thing that you had to add of your own was... Right. And that is infuriating. He didn't highlight Cosmic Carey, who found a bunch of this information as well. She spent months on it. And why didn't he credit her? Well, because the list is getting pretty long at this point. Hard to get that praise if people figure out that it's something that you didn't pitch in with, you know? But yes, Cosmic Carey did so much research on the Stephanie Sue incident because she really cared about what was going on and she wanted to get the truth out there. We should question the validity of what you do because you're very conniving. When you don't get your way, you're angry, you will go to s extremes. And I think he, I think you've done it again. But that's how I'll take it. Like, I will literally take it to the extreme to prove my point. So you need to know this, and this will explain why I did and why this series of events unfolded in the manner that it did. And yes, I do need a therapist. And like, better help is like canceled these days. So I just, um, you guys are my therapy from now on, just so you know. I don't, this is a pattern for you. You know, there's so much more we could probably dig up on you. Honestly, I, I don't have time. I could investigate more and more and more and reveal you if I had more time. And after all of that backlash that she got, which it was a ton, 
Anyone who has a following like Turkey Tom does would have made sure to tell people to support her. And if he actually did research, he would know about her. So one more point that I want to add on this whole right business. Pretty much what Tom did was say what Zach and Stephanie claimed to be the case of their involvement and then he responded with right doesn't actually give an opinion. He calls Zach a conspirator and that's it. Doesn't say how he was conspiring with Stephanie or what role he had in all of this. He just lightly mentions it was a thing. I proved that Zach was involved. That they conspired together against Nick. And he said he had a title in mind. So what are we going to do? Nick even said he felt set up and explained why. Wow, wow, dude, really? Really? This just proves what I was saying about you being petty and going to the just extreme when it doesn't have to be. Like, that's going to be a response. Hey, guys, Nick stole from me. Hey, guys, no, I didn't. I'm getting a lawyer. You're literally proving my point. So, anyways, that's all I have to say. Um, my gut tells me that he was in on this, and let me tell you why. And Tom watched the video that Nick made about Zach's involvement. Here's proof. She straight up implied it. This stuff is not a joke. Allegations like this will follow someone for life. No, there has been no legal action against Nick. And the fact that both Steph and Zach- So he's up to date with everything involving Zach, and still didn't mention any of the specifics. It says you're literally proving my point, my opinion, okay? You're literally proving my opinion about you. So the truth always comes out. People know it, people say it, the truth always comes out. You literally came to my apartment over and over. You came back again. You made more videos with me. You can't act like I was some kind of crazy stalker. Like that's, that's the narrative now or something like that. So anyways, that's all I gotta say. I'm gonna go eat something. If it's come to this point now, if he's gonna go out there and say to Stephanie, I didn't know how to say no, Nick was aggressive, Nick was so angry, we couldn't tell him no, I'm like, and you hung out with me again and again and again, and you drove me to Trisha's party, and you hung out with me at Trisha's party, and you drove me back home, and then you offered to take me there, like, still hanging out with me, I was so scary and aggressive, really, um, but there's no way he didn't know, you know what I mean, there's no way he didn't know that that video just came out, and he was texting me, and literally the last thing he told me was, Wait, aren't you on the plane already? And I said, I'm standing in line. Oh, and safe travels today. That's what he said. They don't know about the fact that Zach was one of Nick's friends and how they used to go over each other's houses, etc., talk on the phone and things in real life. That's the last I heard of him. Not like, hey, did you make it okay? Hey, did you land okay? Hey, did you make it home safely? Hey, man, did you see that video? That chicken nugget just came, you know, talking to me like a normal friend, like as we had for a year. The last time I saw him, hey, did you get home? Hey, did you get home safely? How was your flight? A couple days later, a week later, hey, how's the algorithm today? What's going on? What's good? What do you think about this thumbnail? What should I put in my, t you know, we would help each other. Like we would talk about YouTube stuff. Heard nothing. And this is, again, the good friend that people are saying I threw under the bus. And then he put out his public post that said, Nick and, excuse me, Nick and Chicken Nugget are equally such good friends to me. And that despite that, Zach was helping Stephanie plot behind Nick's back every step of the way. And I'm like, you couldn't put in there, and by the way, stop calling him this, or by the way, I don't think this is about Nick. Um, my gut tells me that he was in on this. And let me tell you why. Zach has told me how extremely competitive he is. During this trip, I told him that I was going to come out with a ramen noodle. The Nikocado Avocado Ramen Noodle, I was going to brand it the look that went on his face. It was as if he got shot in the stomach. Like, I could see the life leave his face. And that's when he told me that he and Chicken Nugget are business partners and they're launching their own ramen noodle. I was in their way. And this is coming from someone who is so competitive. All I can tell you is that I know for a fact how competitive those two are, and they will do anything and anything in their power to make sure that they come out on top. If you know stuff is about to hit the fan, you know things are about to go down, if you know a video is gonna go viral because of some kind of controversy, if you're in it, you're gonna benefit because everyone's gonna be like, well, how is he involved? They're gonna go to your channel and you get views and clicks. The both of them want to be in each other's collabs with me. He asked me about Chicken Nugget the entire car ride, you guys, like the entire car ride. So what'd you say in your video? 
Well, how much did you use her name? Is her name gonna be in the title or is it just gonna be generic? Well, what's the thumbnail look like? How long is the video? And in my heart, in my heart, again, I felt like what I was telling him, he was spoon feeding to the chicken nugget. And he said he had a title in mind. So what are we gonna do? But Turkey Tom leaves all of this information out. He can sit here and pretend that he's doing all of this unique and important research, but has nothing to add about Zach? Why? Because this video isn't meant to set the record straight, or else Tom wouldn't have purposely skipped over the opportunity to reveal the truth about Zach. I mean, come on. He had time to show you that Veronica Wang was a fucking escort of all things, and he somehow forgot to mention this big piece of information about Zach? It's because everything he does is calculated. Veronica was already hated by so many people, most people, because of her previous drama with Nick. So adding in that joke about her slurping noodles and all that wouldn't hurt Tom in any way. But telling people about Zach is a much bigger risk. Bigger than even telling people the truth about Stephanie Sue. Because Zach has rabbit fans as well, but he's also very quiet. People view him as this pedestal. Oh, he's so godly. Oh, so he's so perfect. Because remember, he doesn't talk. So people em people envision him. They view Zach however they want to. Understand that most people have no issues with Stephanie Sue. So even less people have issues with Zach Choi. Because most people were convinced that he was a neutral party. That he was this, oh, I'm in the middle, but I'm in the middle. The point that I'm making is Turkey Tom doesn't care about showing the truth. He's not trying to set the record straight. It's nothing like that. If he did, he would have said a lot more about Zach than just, he's a co-conspirator, which is proof that he knows all of this information and more proof is him saying, right. So it's obvious that he didn't care about the severity of this topic. That's why people like him label their videos as edutainment and satire, because they're more concerned about avoiding backlash while they're making videos where they're attempting to look like some sort of intellectual analyzer. They know that controversy will give them money, fame, and attention and all of that. But it's a tight rope to walk because they don't want to be associated with the controversy either. They just want to profit off of it. They're pretty much grifters. And that's probably why he ended up playing a clip of mine explaining how Stephanie was fake crying because it allowed him to remove himself from it and instead he can just say, oh, it's her opinion, not mine. I'm just showing you what she was saying about Stephanie fake crying. I didn't say she was fake crying because everything that I said about her fake crying got me a lot of backlash at the time. At 3359, he says, It is very likely that Nick has had a hard time doing collaborations with other YouTubers and, in the future, will have a very hard time getting a job because of the accusations that you made about him. It isn't likely. Nick said this in his video and you know it because you watched it. My life is really messed up right now where I'm having sponsors questioning if they're going to work with me. I'm having people all around the world call me a pr and a harasser and a group. And at 3410, he says, In her own response to Nick, she even intentionally skipped over parts of Nick's video that she knows she got caught with. I literally pointed this out. And then she keeps leaving out all this context, but she wants you to believe in her and support her and all this other stuff. So now we're at 3434. I have two points to make about this clip. From that, we can assume that she deleted 3,200,000 views worth of content. She has never addressed why they were deleted publicly or commented on what they were. For one, it's not hard to find out that Stephanie deleted her own videos. A lot of people were talking about it at the time, a lot of people told me about it, and people made videos about it. So he isn't adding anything new here. Secondly, it's not a big thing, but that image that he used came from my video. Then he goes on to talk about more about money. You think I'd get murdered before you do? You have the most money. Rich miss. I would buy that over regular miss. The shit, I feed the shit out of you. <laughs> You guys down to make some money? That moolah fist. If you got them both. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another da -da mukbang. Woo! But he used the image. Like you couldn't even find your own silly clip of her face. You had to take that from my content too? She can easily feign innocence, but underneath she's acting with malicious intent. I'm just saying that this is how much he's using my content left and right. Like every part of his video is my content. And I know that some of you are saying he couldn't possibly care about sub counts. How do you even know that this whole elitist thing even is a thing? Well, he mentions it himself. 
I highly doubt that Stephanie will respond to this video, especially considering the discrepancy in subscribers between my channel and hers. However, if she does, she will likely try to take away my right to an opinion, rather than actually addressing the research that I've done and what I have to say. All she can do is feign victimhood as she did the first time. Like I said, big YouTubers are well aware of the weight that they hold when they choose whether or not to mention you in their video. It's on their mind all of the time. So if Tom can choose to recognize why Stephanie won't mention him, it is obvious that he is well aware of intentionally leaving out our names, while at the same time bringing up all the names of these other YouTubers. The only time these big YouTubers will bring up your name is if they like you, if mentioning it benefits them, or if you're starting to climb up the ladder and they want to tear you down. They will not bring you up in any other instance because the commentary community perpetuates a hierarchy of elitist influencers. A YouTube high, I guess. And that's actually funny because it really is like a YouTuber high. Like a high school of YouTuber clicks and stuff and you gotta know certain people to get ahead. And this whole social climbing thing is like a drug in a sense that they get high off of. That should be an acronym or something, but I digress. And I have one more point to make on this. He has the nerve to say that he is concerned that Stephanie will take away his opinion. But why even bring that up? It's such a random thing to bring up in the video. Why are you so concerned that you have to go on about it for nearly an entire minute? Maybe it's because you did exactly that to so many people in the same video. And you know what the saddest thing is? She didn't even do it to you, Tom. She allowed you to have your opinion. She didn't flag me down either. She even talked about this in the video that you're responding to. And you're the one that made all of these videos using my name for views, which I don't mind. And you call me self-serving. And it's sad, but when it comes to taking away someone's opinion, between you and her, you're actually the person in the wrong here. And that's the irony of projection, pointing the finger of a problem towards someone else when it's actually your problem. And no one can talk about me speculating with you because you're speculating here. You're so worried about if Stephanie responds and plays the victim when she never even did it. So I wonder what that says about your mentality and what you would do if the roles were reversed and you had all of the power. And for everyone who wants to say that I can't call Turkey Tom a liar, he says, but Stephanie Sue is a liar. He's calling her a liar and I'm calling him a liar. So if you're going to get mad at one, you have to get mad at the other. We're finally in the home stretch of this video, and some of you could be thinking, well, he concluded it with his own opinion. Okay, let's see. And the Mookman community is willing to eat up this drama and jump from creator to creator on a whim. But no, that's from my video too. They don't look into anything, they don't look for evidence, they just hop on the bandwagon because even if they're wrong, they can just say, oh, well, everybody else was too. Ultimately, the result doesn't matter to their fans as long as they're entertained. I mean, people watch all this drama stuff for entertainment. They don't actually care about the people that they're criticizing. And if you still think that this is a coincidence, then I love how he just so happens to make it so that every strong point that he made was also in my video. It's almost like he stole the whole thing. But don't worry, it gets so much worse from here. We're at 3637, and if you want more proof that he doesn't care about these issues, listen to his explanation of what watching drama is like for him. Watching drama from these people is like watching two seagulls fight over a french fry. Both seagulls are gross to look at, and you know there's something viscerally grotesque about what you are witnessing, but you continue anyway. So in other words, you take part in it for the entertainment. So he's once again doubling down on the contradiction where he was saying that you shouldn't look at it like it's entertainment. This isn't just entertainment as many mukbang fans seem to treat it, or as Stephanie wants it to be seen. Accusations like this can't just be moved on from, they will follow someone forever. So if you didn't believe it before, it's pretty obvious now that he actually Actually does view this as entertainment which is why he made so many petty jokes about Stephanie throughout the video situation a bit more now that we've established that Stephanie has failed billion two hundred thousand views worth of content she can easily feign innocence while underneath she's acting with malicious intent also Stephanie I may find your videos terrible and I may have spent a decent amount of time insulting you and your friends however put this on and we'll We'll, we'll, we'll call it even. This and everything that you left out about Zach. And speaking of which, we're now at 3721. He purposefully leaves Zach out all the time. Here's one of many examples. But for now, her hordes of impressionable and easy to sway fans will continue watching the content of someone who lied about another creator to millions of people for personal gain. Neither Nikocado, Avocado, or Stephanie Sue are good people. One of them is just much, much better at hiding it. So are you insinuating that Zach is a good person? Because you just showed Zach. You can't act like he wasn't on your mind 
and then you skip right over the co-conspirator, as you called him, to call Nick and Stephanie bad people. This was your moment. This was the actual moment where you could have set the record straight because all the information about Zach came out after everyone made their videos on the incident. And because you waited so long, you were one of the only people left who could have said something about it. But I guess saying, right is saying something. I guess that letting people know that you have something to say, but you won't, is enough somehow. This means nothing to him, but it was everything to everyone who actually cared about getting the truth out there. So since he wasn't waiting so long to do research on everything about Zach, the only reason left for why he took so long to make the video was because he wanted to wait well after the topic was over to avoid as much backlash as possible. If you really wanted to spread a message, the best time to make the video would be to put it out as soon as possible after the incident went down. If he truly wanted to get attention for this incident. So that's all I have to say on everything with Zach. It's just really sad and slimy, but I'm just gonna move on because I want to get this over with. Now we're at 3649, and he says, From now on, Stephanie will have to watch her back. It may not happen tomorrow, next week, or next month, but eventually someone will make a video calling her a terrible person, she'll lose 500,000 subscribers, and everything will have come full circle. And mukbang YouTubers will continue stabbing each other in the back, not being understanding in any respect of the personal shortcomings of one another, and perpetuating a cycle of cancel culture having its way once again. Someone will come out and expose Stephanie Sue, just like what happened to Veronica, and just like what happened to Nick. It is only a matter of time. Tom, you should look out because you need to take your own advice. Screwing people over like this will eventually come back to you. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but if you keep stealing from people, eventually someone with a much bigger voice than me, who is a lot more likable, will inevitably say something about it. And then it'll all come back full circle onto you. Wait, hang on. I swear, I swear I'm getting deja vu. Oh my God, he stole that from me too. I said that. Are you kidding me? Stephanie, you may have picked on Nick because he's an easy target and everybody hates him, but you just made a lot of enemies because best believe that the second something comes up where they can use it against you, everyone's going to try to take you down because the internet never forgets. The real story is out now and as time goes by and as all your K-pop fans grow up, the truth will reveal itself and people will see through you. I only scratched the surface of who she is. If you watched all of her mukbangs, you probably find a hell of a lot more. This doesn't even have anything to do with information. It's just advice. You couldn't add one original thing in this whole video? Like the gall to say that you're stealing with permission, man. To tell me that you're just gonna take some sources from me. What is wrong with you? This is like textbook plagiarism. He would be expelled from college if he did this on a report. He just paraphrased me the same way that I just paraphrased his paraphrase of my original advice. Like, I know I'm going in circles here, but I just, I'm having a hard time explaining what I want to say here because words cannot describe how obvious this is and how fucking pissed off I am. Like, this isn't even an overview or information. It's just a warning that I gave her and you had to take that from me too? He even stole the part afterwards, people. The part about cancel culture. And mukbang YouTubers will continue stabbing each other in the back, not being understanding in any respect of the personal shortcomings of one another and perpetuating a cycle of cancel culture, having its way once again. The problem is that Stephanie is a calculating person. Whether it's James Charles versus Tati, this, or any other drama related situation, most of the time, everyone has some fault involved. So why is it so hard for people to accept that they were both being petty and inconsiderate at times? That they both had intentions that they weren't voicing publicly, that they were both manipulative. Then he adds in a few more situations to make it seem like it's his own original opinion, when all that sh is implied already with what I already said. But then tell me why he brings this up at the end of his video, just like how I brought it up at the end of my video. And he brings this up after his warning to Stephanie because I brought it up right after my warning to Stephanie. We need to have a conversation about this guy's structure, okay? Because I just noticed something that's really fucked up. You want to know something that's interesting that one of my Discord members kept bringing up to me? Ignore any noise from outside. They say, So one thing I noticed that bothers me about his video is, while there is an introduction and a recap of the situation, it doesn't feel like there is a natural progression to his points. When people do a video like this, they tend to either follow A, the progression of the original video and address it as it goes, or B, structure their points in a way that the last point transitions to and strengthens the next one until we reach a conclusion. His points don't follow either of those, they just show up. 
They kept talking about how his video was so random, how Turkey Tom keeps going back to old points over and over again as if he didn't already address them previously, how there's really no structure even though he clearly put in effort to structure all of his points into specific segments. And I actually figured out why that is. I already did my original reaction to Stephanie's first video, so it would make no sense for me to react to it again, which is why when I did my follow-up video, I just tied in all of the new information through the responses I gave her to her follow-up of Nick Akata which means that my follow-up video was completely structured around her follow-up video. However, if you're in Turkey Tom's position and you want to pretend that you aren't copying me, you have to change the structure of the video, right? The last thing that Tom will want to do is say something every time she says something because it's a lot easier to tell when someone's copying the way that you structure your points rather than copying the points themselves. Tom, however, tried to make it seem like he was giving a general analysis of everything that happened, right? But if that really was the case, why is the overview only in the first 11 minutes of the video? And why does he mostly just address every big point in her follow-up video, but not the original? He barely mentions it. Wasn't that the entire point of all of this drama? The original video and how she structured it? The way that he responds to her follow-up is as if he's already gone over the original or something when he never made a video on it. And that's because that's what I did. Because I did make a video on it. Pay attention to everything that he's pointed out so far. These were all rebuttals to Stephanie Sue's follow-up video, but why? Because my video was nothing but rebuttals to her follow-up. And that's why his video doesn't really have any real structure to it despite the fact that he has all those breaks added in. Because all of his points are a response to things that Stephanie said in her follow-up without showing what he's responding to. So do you understand what this means? He's just mixing everything around on a bigger level than I originally thought. If Stephanie goes back to a point, it makes sense for me to do it too because I'm just responding to her points in the order that she says them. But he has no reason to go back if he wants to talk about her security footage. He should just have a segment for that. If he wants to talk about manipulation, he can make a segment for that because of how he's structuring his video. All parts about these segments should be in those specific sections, but they're not. They're all over the place because while he's copying my response, he's throwing away the points that I'm responding to. So it would look something like this, not including him, you know, switching around paragraphs and stuff like that. So when you base your video around rewording another video that is responding to someone, your video is going to be confusing and all over the place because half of the conversation is missing. We're at 3818. Now his video technically starts to wrap up at the 3524 mark, and even though people will start clicking off by this point, let's just start the timer at the last sentence of his conclusive opinion, since this video is long enough already. And that is about three minutes later, at 3818. So this is the area where even less people are watching. And even though you know that he put my video at the very end of his, you need to see for yourself how much time goes by and how long he rambles before actually showing my channel. And when you see it, you can finally understand why he couldn't have done a better job of hiding my channel if he tried. This is what he believes is more important to tell you before showing my channel name. Also, Stephanie, I may find your videos terrible, and I may have spent a decent amount of time insulting you and your friends. However, put this on, and we'll, 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 we'll call it even. Hit up this Twitter handle. Don't subscribe to me unless you like gamer words. So I just want to thank Leafy's here for letting me be in his video. This is Tom Chan signing off. Leave me alone. And so, to see that, to see where he placed my name, to see that I was the very last person to get any credit and all that I got was four seconds of my name slapped at the end, you can understand why I feel the way that I feel. Even though I can't describe it, I can't just say that I'm mad. It's not anger, it's something worse. And I don't know what it is, but it is some form of betrayal. Because of the fact that I pitied him when I first spoke to him, I gave him advice, I was trying to help him, and that's what he does in return? And you can further understand since he openly admitted that he stole from me. Because again, if this is a joke, what's the punchline? Where's the joke? How is it hyperbolic for you to steal from me? I honestly want an answer, because after all this time, I can't find one. 
I understand that I will most likely get a lot of backlash because of how much people hate me and all the stuff that's happened on this channel recently with people purposefully trying to slander my name and taking me out of context and you know, I've been dealing with some hate group stuff. It's, it's a whole thing. And I know that I'm talking a lot in this video so long, it's probably over an hour and people probably aren't going to get through it. But regardless of what happens, I'm saying this for three reasons. One, this is what my whole channel is about. I talk about manipulation and abusive tendencies all the time. So it honestly makes no sense for me to not make a video on it. And people could easily argue that by not saying something, if I ever brought up something like this in the future, if it happened to someone else, people could easily say that I kept my mouth shut in this situation to be on Turkey Tom's good side, arguing that I'm a part of this whole YouTuber high thing too. So any way you look at it, people can hate me for this. And whether it gets views or not, it's the truth. The second reason is because I wanted to say thank you. I really appreciated what Christopher Tom did for me. He actually played two of my clips in their entirety. And he mentioned me by name and showed my channel as well. Are you sure about that? One point that the YouTuber Karina Fujio brought up was that Stephanie has made many house videos herself. Another point Karina Fujio brought up is that Stephanie's crying in her past videos seems a lot more authentic than in her first video about Nick. He also gave credit to Nick when Nick pointed things out. He did an actual overview of the entire situation. Like, he just gave us basic respect. Respect that we deserved in the first place. But it means a lot more because a lot of people don't do that. How many big YouTubers do you see shouting out tiny channels with only 4k subs? He only has like 50k subs, but still, it, it was a big deal to me. And I just want to make it clear that I don't know this guy. Me and Christopher are not friends. He never messaged me. That's right. He never asked me for permission to use my content because he didn't have to, and he wasn't trying to do anything slimy with it either. He just used it in fair use and gave me credit. And the reason why I even know that his video is out there, even though he never told me, is because he left a comment on one of my other videos and people recognized him. They're like, oh my god, it's what? I can't believe you're on this channel. And I never had a bigger YouTuber comment on one of my videos. So I checked out his channel and stumbled on it. That's it. So I wanted to say thank you. But I couldn't bring up his name without mentioning Turkey Tom because of the YouTuber high stuff. Turkey Tom has more subs and both of their names are Tom. So it's obvious that if I didn't mention Turkey Tom and mention Christopher Tom, people would be like, uh, isn't there another Tom you want to credit? When I only got like 20 subs from Turkey Tom and I got like 300 from Christopher Tom. But the funny thing is, Tom never spoke to me again, by the way. Yeah, that is the last thing that he ever said to me. He didn't even link me the video when I clearly said that that's what you're supposed to do. And you already know that I didn't know that Zaptai and Turkey Tom were the same person. So the question is, if you're going to ask someone to use their content, wouldn't you send them the video when it's done? And the funny thing is, when I told him that's what he's supposed to do, he said he understood that already, remember? That he was doing this all out of courtesy. Talk about common courtesy, so he has no excuse. So at the time, when I finally saw his video, I just so happened to see it, I still didn't know that Zaptai was the person who made it. I just knew that some person with 100k subs used my video and didn't really give me any credit. So I decided to put his video title on my tag so that people would know where the clips came from, since I knew that most people weren't going to stick around to see my name. And then I noticed an immediate boost in subs. I can't find the comments anymore, but people even told me that they saw my video on the side of his, and that's how they found me. They didn't mention that wannabe poor excuse of a shout out that he left at the end. And that's because now my video is popping up directly adjacent to his in the recommendeds. This way, despite his efforts to suppress me, people could see that my video existed. If he actually credited me, I shouldn't have noticed a boost in subs. But I was getting 10 times more after that. Like, my sub count literally went from like 20 subs from him to like 200, almost overnight. And to think that all I got from his shout out or mention or whatever the hell you want to call that is 20 subs, that's not even 0.1% of his view count at the time. He had like 200,000 views or something at the time. That's like 0.01% of 200,000. I think his video had like 300,000 or something. And so just to give you more perspective, remember that when Christopher Tom mentioned me, I got like 300 subs and the guy only has 50K subs. So purely just in terms of numbers, something isn't right. Tangent over. 
My third reason is the most important reason. And this is why I'm talking about bigger YouTubers. Bigger YouTubers do this all the time to smaller YouTubers. And we're supposed to just shut up about it because we should be grateful for anything that we get. But I'm not. And I will make it very clear that even if people hate me for it, their opinions don't matter. Mass dislike it, suppress this video, don't share it around. It doesn't matter. No one stole from them. No one took their hard work and made hundreds or thousands of dollars, subs and views off of it. So I do have a right to complain because it isn't okay and I shouldn't be okay with it. This was honestly just wrong. Like, I don't know if those other two people that he stole from are aspiring to be YouTubers, but it doesn't change the fact that what he did is wrong. And I have no respect for you going forward, Tom. I now know enough about you to know that I don't want anything to do with you ever. So I'm making it clear publicly here that you are the most deplorable person that I've had a conversation with yet on this platform. So now, I want to talk about the fact that the youth is precious. I know that this seems kind of random, but I'm bringing this up to cover all my bases, okay? I've heard everything from people when I've made criticisms of others, and I know what to expect at this point when making videos on people. And for anybody who wants to tell me that I'm being too harsh on him, let me break this down for you. I understand that Turkey Tom has a young sounding voice. I have one myself. I know what one sounds like. So let's just say for the sake of this scenario that he's 14 years old. I highly doubt that he's 13. I mean, he doesn't even sound like he's 14 to me, honestly. But let's just say for the sake of the argument that he is. The first thing that people want to do is climb to his defense like they do with any other child on this platform. And they say, you know, well, he's a kid or he's young. Like even if he's like 18, oh, but he's, he's not an adult yet. He can't drink yet. He's still young. He's still growing. He's got his whole life ahead of him. First of all, I got my whole life ahead of me too, so that's not really a f***ing argument here. I'm not gonna tell you my age, but I am in the age of youth, so that isn't a f***ing excuse. But they'll still say you can't ridicule him because he could still change. Well, how the hell are people supposed to change if you don't tell them what they did wrong? Did you know that when you don't tell young people what they're doing wrong, they just get better at doing f up things? How are you supposed to change if there's no consequence to their actions? What makes you think that being excused and rewarded for bad behavior ever helps anybody change for the better? You do realize that if a young child is capable of doing these things, and be it that the only consequence here is one small YouTuber complaining, he should consider himself lucky because plagiarism is a crime. So it could be a lot worse for him under a different set of circumstances. And that's probably another reason why he steals from small channels all the time. It's because you got practice. That's why you got better at it. That's why you got to call out children when they do fucked up shit. Or else you're going to have little see a pass and some pass running around fucking with people's lives. For you to pretend as if any disapproval of this person's actions is going to ruin their life, you're deliberately gaslighting to protect him. And that doesn't work on me. We know what it looks like when someone actively tries to ruin someone's life. We saw it with Nick. This is not that situation. And for you to ignore the opportunities that he stole from us is an intentional form of deception and manipulation. All children are not the same. Some children lie. Some children steal. Some children kill. And at the age of 14, you know better. He could be 14. He could be 28 years old. I don't care. But he's proven by analyzing Stephanie's behavior that he knows better. He understands what manipulation is and how it works. And I'm saying all this because the fact that he tried to play this whole naive game with me, someone who he doesn't even know, means that he's probably pretending to be innocent to a lot more people. He hid everything because he didn't want to get caught. Not to mention the fact that what if the situation was reversed? I highly doubt that if a bigger YouTuber stole his content, he wouldn't say anything about it. Since he's a commentary channel of all things, with hundreds of thousands of subs, hell, he did speak on it before it ever even happened, remember? She will likely try to take away my right to an opinion rather than actually addressing the research that I've done and what I have to say. All she can do is feign victimhood as she did the first time. And I know, people are going to say, well, what if he's sorry? Doesn't it make it better if he's sorry? If he was sorry, don't you think he would have apologized by now? This happened last year, and he never said a word. But that's okay, right? If he said he's sorry. People using and manipulating you, profiting off of you, it's all okay though because they said they're sorry. Isn't it great that no matter what they do, as long as they say that they're sorry, once they get caught, we're supposed to move on. We're supposed to forgive them. I thought that the only time that we were supposed to move on is if the person genuinely made a mistake. But this wasn't a mistake. 
So no, Tom, I don't want any apology because you're not sorry. If anything, you're just sorry that you got caught and you're gonna do it again. If you can get away with it, you'll do it again. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what your whole career was built off of. Because if you didn't like doing this, you wouldn't be doing it. It's that simple. Like, do you realize how much energy it takes to do everything that he did? He took so much strenuous effort to lie to me, create a false persona, get my information, picking and choosing what extra random info to add in, hiding names and only showing certain names, changing his format, rewording everything, lying in DMs, and the list goes on and on and on. That takes a lot of effort and practice. So it's just speculation, but I highly doubt that we're the first people that he did this to. And it'll probably always be speculation because people like us only have 5k subs if we're lucky. So the chances of anyone else coming out on this is slim to none. So now you know why I didn't say anything about the shoutouts that I got from Christopher Tom and technically, but not really, Turkey Tom. And now that it's out in the open, I can finally move on with my life. This is the end of my series. I don't think I have any more topics that I need to revisit. I'm going to do a let's talk to end the series off because I need to talk about something else to wrap everything up. And I know that the videos in this series are very long, so people will want me to shorten them. But like I said before, I just don't have the energy to do it. It's hard enough for me to just get through this. I'm, I'm just so tired of listening to his voice and these topics. So I'm still going to try to shorten the iDubs one because I promised that like six months ago or more. But you see how long that took for me to get to that. So don't expect for me to shorten these. Regardless, thanks for watching. And for the ones who stayed to the very end and the ones who believe me, thank you. I really mean it. Thank you.